Welcome to Day Trip in Wisconsin. Today we're here in Shawano, Wisconsin, and we're at Triggs Beverage. We're going to find out a little bit about the history about the company and the products they make. So when we come back, we'll learn all about it. So stay tuned. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can, but one day I could be a stadium. Well, welcome back. Today we're here at Tw Twigs Beverage. We're here with Dan. Dan, tell us a little bit about your facility and how you got started and kind of the, the history of, of the... Okay, uh, Twigs Beverage uh, has been around since 1951. My father, Floyd Hartwig, is the guy that actually started the business. Um, and he was in the Korean War. Uh, he was shot through both knees when he was in the war and uh, came up with this idea because he was wondering what he was going to do with his life when he got back to Shano. Right. And he decided to uh, come up with a bottling company. And uh, his softball buddies, they said, hey, we're going to help you get this going. So uh, they helped him uh, do Twigs Beverage. And that's how it got going. All right. Now, was there a certain product that he was looking at at the time, whether it was like, you know, uh, like, a, like a beer or a soda or a craft kind of brew soda? What, what was the product that he was going when, for at the time? When he first started out, there were, there were quite a few bottlers in, in the whole state. I mean, every town had a small bottler, and he... Um, uh, he started with a drink, a couple of drinks. One was called Bullseye Root Beer, and the other one was called Goody Orange. So he had some Goody flavors and bull, Bullseye Root Beer, but it wasn't too long uh, after that he started when Charles Lassier, the inventor of Sundrop, asked him if he would like to bottle Sundrop. And uh, that's how it got going in the area. It's been our number one drink ever since the beginning, and it still is right up till today. Right, so the Sundrop brand itself is unique to Wisconsin. It's, it's unique. Um, there's pockets in the country. Okay. okay. It started in St. Louis, and if you get down in the Carolinas, the western part of, uh, like, uh, or the eastern part, excuse me, of Tennessee, Kentucky, very popular. Now, uh, uh, you know, even into Georgia, it's very popular down there. But Wisconsin is one of the original places that had it. Um, like, my uh, Twigs Beverage was the first bottle in Wisconsin, and now we're the only ones bottling it anymore in Wisconsin mm -hmm. so now with with bottling you know there's you know nowadays everything's either in a plastic bottle mm -hmm. or an aluminum can mm -hmm. but you still bottle in glass yes uh, we still do a glass bottle we think that customers like that flavor uh, a lot more than the plastic or cans but the one thing is it's awfully expensive to do it in the glass bottles because uh, glass bottlers are hard to find so to get uh, products such as carriers and uh, you know actually the glass itself is hard to get uh, but uh, we just think that it's a really nostalgic way of making it and I mean that's how I grew up right. and, and people come from all over to get the glass glass bottles from us, right. along with our other glass bottle flavors besides Sundrop. Right. As we, I, I remember growing up on the farm, I, I, we grew, I grew up right outside of uh, Eggert, Wisconsin there, mm -hmm. and uh, going into uh, Eggert there at the IGA, we used to get the big, the, the, the uh, wood crates yeah. of, you know, anything from like Mountain Dew, Dr. Pepper in a glass bottle, and even Sundrop, you know, mm -hmm. getting, getting Sundrop in a bottle on the farm after a hot day, you know, after making bales, you know, that was a, a real treat, you know, and, and that's kind of something that, you know, I miss, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people miss a lot of that. I mean, is it still pretty easy to come by this product, you know, on, on the market, you know, outside? In, yeah, in this area, it's a lot easier to find uh, returnable bottle, bottles, glass bottles, uh, non-returnable glass. You, you'll find more of the non-returnable around different parts of the country, but the returnable glass is probably unique to this area because you have to get those bottles back. 
and uh, because of that, we don't we don't go into other states to try to sell it. We're just uh, within a sixty mile radius, really, of Shano. Right. So no, I mean, uh, I mean, environmentally speaking, you know, I, I was thinking about this while I was driving up here. You know, there's got to be um, if everyone returned their bottles, it's probably more cost effective than getting bottles made, throwing them away, getting them recycled, all the energy. Mm -hmm. Is there, you get a lot of them that come back, you know, that someone just says, well, I'm just gonna keep them or just throw them in the recycle. You, you get them mostly back? A lot of the returnables we do get back, but we do, we lose quite a few of them as well. But, uh, you know, we're still using some bottles from back in the 1960s. You know, they're still coming back. I mean, they're, you know, it's a bottomless container because you can keep reusing that container and um, but even the non-returnable glass it's uh, you know a hundred percent recyclable too right. if, if people take care of it right so so just not only Sundrop what other products do you bottle here well we have a, our own line of twigs uh, flavors uh, we have uh, black cherry blue raspberry uh, uh, an orange we're working on we have a couple of different root beers working on some more plus we do a lot of uh, private label bottling as well working on a ginseng cranberry uh, soda uh, you know kind of unique to Wisconsin we've actually kind of um, introduced that at the ginseng festival uh, this past fall and uh, got a good response so we're going to work on that um, but we do have and we have a, a grape that we make it's called forget me not grape every uh, package sold uh, uh, a donation is made to the forget me not fund which is a fund that benefits Alzheimer's disease okay. and uh, it's really uh, you know and that's been going real well yeah, something that can help uh, yep. can help the people in the community on that so that's right now when when you're talking about bottling what's what kind of setup do you have the I mean I'm sure you just don't use a funnel or whatever and just uh, the old-fashioned like in the like I've seen in the Lehman's catalog you know the old-time <laughs> equipment where you can get the bottler and just have that little hand stamp to put yep. the cap around is that pretty close to how you do things here too? It's or? pretty it's you know it, it's made uh, the idea behind it all is, is the same you start out with the syrup and the syrup that is a, it's, they call it post mix and it's a, it's a mixture of the sugar the flavoring uh, things like that that give that product what it uh, that flavor and uh, we have vats that we mix that in okay. and then uh, in in that during that process uh, from those vats we take and go it goes over to a flow mix and blender machine that blends and then it also carbonates that soda after it's mixed with water so you take the water that syrup it's blended together like a one to five ratio one to four ratio depending on how sweet that product is supposed to be and then it's carbonated with uh, carbon dioxide so we're a, um, the soft drink industry is a big user of carbon dioxide as well so I mean uh, like places that they don't know how to get rid of their carbon dioxide soft drink industries use a lot of it so right so, so that's yeah. another benefit to the environment right so now when you're when you were talking about uh, other bottling for other companies does that mean that they have an idea and they just bring it to you saying hey you know what I got this new new drink that I want to produce you know and mm -hmm. can you do something for me is that what you do here too yep that's what we do I mean if you have if you have an idea I mean we'll take a look at it and if it's something simple that we could just add flavors to ours uh, uh, something to make it like we, we've had uh, everything from uh, a chocolate cream soda or chocolate root beer and a bacon cream soda that had a hint of bacon in it. Uh, we've tried all different flavors and then we take it into our testing area and let uh, people that come into our museum here sample like the different flavors and if we get a thumbs down enough times we're, we're not going to follow through with it right. okay but if everybody said this is a winner we'll probably look into it a little heavier and uh, you know because you got to buy packaging you got to buy labels you have to get UPC codes and right. you know things like that you're uh, very expensive to get, right. get it working on now talking about the museum We'll be right back, but when we do, then we'll talk about a little bit more about the museum and, and the rest of the uh, factory here. So stay tuned.
Did you know dragging chains can spark a wildfire? Only you can prevent wildfires. Well, welcome back. Tell us a little bit about the, the museum here. I mean, I, you don't really see too many that, you know, will display something in a local community and, and on their products. So give us a little uh, history and background of the museum and how this part got started. Okay, this was uh, actually a building we took that was close by our old plant, and uh, they were going to rip it down. And we d we decided that it was too nice a building to really rip down, so we had you know picked it up for a good price and just started uh, you know renovating it and uh, hung up a couple of our old signs that we kept uh, kept uh, in the warehouse. And before long, we just you know we kept adding and adding and adding and and uh you know it just it just ballooned from there. Um, we've been open for two years, but we worked on it for almost 10 years prior to that. So, and then we collected all these old sun drop memorabilia uh, collections of puzzles and signs. Uh, like if you walk around, there's quite a history with Shano and the connection and Wisconsin, and you'll see all these old signs uh, and see like how originally sun drop, they went after coffee drinkers. So you'll see a lot of coffee cups. You'll see golden cola because it was the first gold drink on the market, like a gold soda. You know, prior to that, it was only uh, uh, like a grape, a whip beer, orange, and uh, the Sun Drop was the first gold drink. So, as you come into the museum, you're going to see a lot of Sun Drop memorabilia, and you'll learn a lot about the history of Sun Drop. And then, uh, you know, we, we kind of use it almost as a tool because we can send, have people come and taste the product, and then we learn from what they like as far as their tastes. Now, how, how many visitors do you normally get? I mean, Toronto's in between like Green Bay and Wausau, so there's always quite a bit of traffic, so yeah. you must get quite a bit of visitors here all the time. Just in the little time that we've been open, we've had close to 100,000 uh, uh, visitors here, and you can tell by our poles that we have, we have 16 of these yellow poles around, and they're just solid, full of signatures. We let, we didn't know what to do with the poles, so we just thought, I just let people sign them, and uh, names, you can't fit names on them anymore, so we had to eliminate, quit doing that, because yeah. they're so full. But uh, yeah, I mean, in the summertime especially, we get a lot of people coming from all over the place, uh, just visiting us. And um, it's, you know, the same thing from the Wausau, northeastern part of Wisconsin, to the Green Bay, even Milwaukee. But you'll see a lot of different countries that are actually signed on these poles, too. I mean, as far away as Kyrgyzstan and Brazil and Japan and China, all these people have been here Ready. So it's it's interesting all, and it's you got to give a lot of credit to the internet and Facebook, and right. people see a lot of that. Right, it's just amazing that you know you that you'll have somebody that far away that just <laughs> yep. you know during their trip or stay here that they yeah but they pick a spot to go to to, to visit something that they probably yep. wanted to in a while, and, and I'm sure you get a lot of good feedback on that. We do, because uh, there's a lot of people that just, you know, maybe they're on their way up to Door County and they looked on uh, TripAdvisor or something and they said, oh, you got to stop into this Twigs Beverage Sun Drop Museum. And uh, that's what they do and uh, they're fascinated by how much there is to do here and see. Right. So, so you got a lot of interesting things here in the museum. I've seen like a, a, the old soda machine where you put the, the change in there and open the door and pull it out. Yep. You know, that's the one I'm familiar with, you know, because <laughs> that's, that's what I've seen in town. So, but, yeah. um, but uh, do they still, I mean, talking about the vending machine part, when I've seen it, do they still make such a thing for bo glass bottles? No. no, no, but there are a lot of them out there in the market. And I mean, if you went on, you know, some of the uh, sales on, on the internet, you can, you can find some of these that are refurbished, but they're not cheap. No. You used to be able to pick them up cheap. Uh, we have one there where you can slide the bottle along and then put, put your money in and then pull it up. But uh, people, uh, uh, young, young people figured out that they could just 
pop the top off and suck it all out with a straw, and that uh, so that kind of eliminate those as vending machines. Because I remember myself when I used to run routes with my father, and uh, you'd get to a place and the whole thing would be empty bottles and no money in it. So right. so yeah. Do you ever have people that come in here and ask, you know, what what is that? You know, because yeah. oh, yeah. they've never seen one before. Yep. A lot of younger people have never they don't know what that is. Right. Yeah, I mean, but you know, older people they've lived through that. Yeah, we used to have one of those by our filling station, you know, things like that. So, right. so I, like, like I said, it must bring a lot of memories back, you know, when, when a person was younger back, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to date myself. I mean, I'm 37, but I remember, you know, you know, back in the early 80s that that's, that's what we had, you know. Yeah, well, I'm 27, so. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish I was that age again. But, yeah. but uh, it, it was just really neat. But you know, it's it, it, it's it's almost kind of sad to see some of that stuff. But now things are coming back. You know, like yep. vinyl records and right, that's exactly. Right. You know, yep. But the glass bottles, you know, they're always been unique and. Mm -hmm. For a while, there they were hard to find. Yep, you know? and they they still are hard to find. Um, you know, uh, I think the the convenience of not bringing them back as returning them kind of keeps a lot of people from buying them. Uh, but uh, and and it's harder on trying to find bottles anymore right. to do that. You know, years ago, you you know there were so many bottlers around that when one guy would close up, you could actually buy all his bottles. Right. There's nobody closing up anymore. So because there aren't, aren't any. Right. right, so when we walk around the museum, we have a chance to look at some of that. And then you also have a window where yep. you can actually see the that's right. The facility line there. Yep, you can watch the bottling, and uh, and there, if uh, for some reason they're either changing over or uh, they're, they're just in a cleaning process, there's movies in here that you can watch and bottle. Um, there's also a little theater here that you can watch uh, the history of Sundrop and and how it started going. So. Now, with your production, is that something you run every day or? It, um, we have like three bottling lines uh, in the black here, and usually one of them is running, but uh, the one that's in the museum here, it's, uh, it runs uh, probably in the summertime a good four days a week. So, you know, on the weekend we don't, and Friday, we usually Friday afternoon, we try to clean everything really good, so that's... Uh, and then what are your hours here for at the museum, or is it... Every every day through the week. Every day uh, in, in the summertime, it's every day Monday through Friday, ten till five. Okay, Saturday is ten to three. Now uh, at this time of the year, we're closed on Monday, so it's Tuesday through uh, Friday, ten to five, and Saturday is ten to three. And you're closed on Sunday. Sunday we're closed. Yes. Right. So. Okay. Well, when we come back, we're going to walk through the production line there and see the beginning to end process of how sodas and glass bottles are made. So stay tuned. Fast-paced family life in need of a slowdown? Hello, I'm Dr. Spruce. Did you know all those green shapes on maps are parks and forests? It's true. Visit discovertheforest.org and plan to visit a park or forest near you, instead of just wondering what it would have been like. While the word forest might make you think of distant lands from far, far away, please note parks and forests are closer than you think, which means things like beautiful scenery, fresh air, and family time are also closer than you think. Hold it for 
find ourselves the data was produced. Each, each one of these. Okay. Then, if, then we send the models over to the rinser. Okay? And it's a McGrady orbital rinser. Takes each bottle, takes it off the line, prints them upside down, sprays them out, so there's no dust particles, so we left in the bottle, and that all the rinses out and goes down the drain. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. We're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. Well, welcome back. We're, we're here at the, uh, the tasting bar. Yep, the tasting bar is a very unique place to a museum, and uh, uh, the Twigs Museum lets you uh, sample all of our traditional flavors, like the Sun Drop and root beers, things like that, but we also have a lot of unique flavors uh, from a blueberry, a rhubarb soda, a caramel apple soda, uh, we have blue raspberry, we have the forget-me-not grape, plus many other ones, even a chocolate root beer that we're just letting people try now to see how it goes. It tastes kind of like a Tootsie Roll, actually. So, so yeah. How, how much? I, I always was curious when people sample. How much do you go through this in like a year? Like when you're at, at the sampling bar, is it quite a bit? Or you're? You know, it's not uncommon to go through ten to twelve cases on a weekend. You know, on a Friday and a Saturday. So, but we do we put a lot in premix tanks. Okay. So then we keep. Uh, if you see our tap system they're all on tap there so then then that saves a lot because you're only putting them into those right. five gallon canisters right so. and those can be reused yes. easily yep easily relabeling and that's and right all that yep. stuff yep so you got your own private brands here yep and these are items or products that you currently have out on the market now. Yep, you can taste whatever you want here, and if you like it, you can buy it in our gift store that's in the front of the museum. And you can buy it in a six pack, you can buy it in a 12 pack, you can buy cases of it, you know, so, but you know, the beauty of it is you can sample it here, right. and if you don't like it, then you don't have to buy it. So. Right, because like me, you yeah. know, if it was something like a black licorice tasting, I'm not a fan of that. Okay, you don't want to do it. Yeah. If it was regular licorice, then maybe. But yeah, okay. you know, at least this is a way for people to, to sample yep. this before they try it, because you, you know you don't yep. want to buy something you got, you're going to throw the whole thing away. You know, That's or right. Find someone that wants it. So. I agree. But I, I think this is a great way to you know, to showcase the, the flavors that you have here and have people sample and see what they like before 
Now, and one of our flavors that was actually started a long time ago by another bottling company that was in town. It was started, it closed up in 1992, but they had such a following for this sour they made, like it called Imperial Sour, the, the guy came to us and said, hey, we're going out of business. We want to give you this recipe. And uh, since that time, it's like just been huge. I mean, it's a lemon sour, not a grapefruit sour, a lemon sour. People really like it. Huh. So, but yeah, we, we have a bartender that stands back here and there's all the bar stools and if we get really packed, we'll have them fill in on the tables and just take out uh, uh, a lot of different, uh, you know, try whatever they want. Uh, our busiest weekend we've ever had was a, we have an event in town called the Sundrop Days and it's a festival, it's in early in June and uh, this place was just packed. I mean, it was, uh, they have people giving you rides, horse rides uh, to the museum, dropping you off, taking you back, and there's, it's really a pretty neat thing. But uh, th this is a big part of it. They like to come here and sample everything. So if you want to sample some. Yeah, we can try okay. this here. We, we got, got one. Uh, I, I like red. Okay, let's try that. It's a blueberry drink. So let's, uh, I'll just pour you a little bit because it's, it's uh, It's really good. Yeah, it's got that, it's just a touch of rhubarb in there flavoring, so. Right. You know, that's that's one one of our more popular ones. And this is another unique one is, uh, it's uh, it's called uh, caramel apple. But people can't figure out how you can get that apple flavor in there, so. But, yeah. That's the caramel apple. Yeah, it, it, it's just the, the right flavoring, you know, not really sweet. No. You know, like some of the, the major sodas on the market, some of them are just the too uh, overpowering, yeah. overpowering yeah. sweet, you know, and this is just right, you know. Yep, and here's, a, here's another one of our real popular ones. It's called Blue Raspberry, and uh, it's got like a, you know, just a kind of a raspberry flavor, but it almost tastes like a snow cone. Right, almost. exactly. A lot of people do that, and that's another thing is we're real popular with our slushies. So each month we switch off, and we'll have maybe a blueberry slushy, or in the summertime we'll have a blue raspberry or a grape, and we'll switch it off, put it in our slush machines, and uh, people come in there and get a slushy for a buck. Oh, yeah, know, I'm big, sure that's a big. Uh, it is popular it's, on that. Part. It's very popular. This is our popular grape. That uh, this is the Forget Me Not grape that benefits the Alzheimer Awareness Fund. So yeah, yeah. So and that's uh, yeah. Just give you a little bits for people to try. You know, so you don't get uh, over full of them, but you get a, you get the sample there. Yeah, sample there, and then you can find out what you really like and what you really like to purchase there. And it's uh, you know, all non-alcoholic, so we don't have to cut you off at right. any time. And uh, it's um, it's it's just fun. You can bring your whole family here. It costs nothing to get in the museum. All this is all free. The slushies are a buck, but we have the gift shop up in the front. And if you want to buy shirts or product and that's right. where so uh, you know well thank you so much for inviting us over here it's been a, thank you it's been a thanks great, for stopping by I appreciate it's, it uh, you know it's, like i said it's something that i remember from my childhood from bottling there and uh, yep. uh i thought we uh come down here and, and get a little bit of this you know it's it's always nice to find something that's local in our state of wisconsin that that produces such uh products like this and also somebody that also helps the community and, and, and benefits and stuff like that which is really great so stay tuned and we'll be right back Fast-paced family life in need of a slowdown? Hello, I'm Dr. Spruce. Did you know all those green shapes on maps are parks and forests? It's true. Visit discovertheforest.org and plan to visit a park or forest near you, instead of just wondering what it would have been like. While the word forest might make you think of distant lands from far, far away, please note parks and forests are closer than you think, which means things like beautiful scenery, fresh air, and family time are also closer than you think. That's all the time we have for today. Until next time, we'll see you on the road.